Hey guys, my name is Rob, and this is another episode of Burt's Burt's. Today, we are not in Vancouver, and as you might be able to tell, this doesn't look like Vancouver at all, right? We are in my home state of Massachusetts. More specifically, we are on Cape Cod, and this is where I learned how to bird watch. We are at Sandy Neck Beach. In fact, we're actually on the opposite side of Sandy Neck Beach. It's on the upper part portion of Cape Cod, not up on the hook, but in the base, middle part, pretty much like in the arm and the bicep right there. Today we're going to be exploring the marsh side, and the marsh side is a perfect place to just sit back, relax, and just watch birds pass by, which is why I brought this, my spotting scope. Spotting scope is a great way to see birds from a distance, and because of this marsh, the nature of this marsh, there's a lot of distance out there, and sometimes the birds are really, really far. So the spotting scope will definitely help us see the birds a little better. I'm going to go into the marsh right now, set up the spotting scope, and we'll see what we can find out here. Well, here we are in the Great Marsh. So. What do you do in situations such as this? I mean, as you can see, this is a really, really big place. But this is when binoculars can really come in handy. So with my binoculars, since I have basically a little over 180 degrees of view to work with, I'm going to go from one corner and I'm gonna slowly scan, like really slow, don't go too fast, slowly scan the horizon. And as I'm scanning, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the ground and the sky ground sky, ground sky, ground sky, all the way over. And here's what I'm looking for. There are a lot of birds in the grass, some of them very small, some of them very large, such as geese and ducks, small being like meadow larks, sparrows, and finches. In the sky, there's a lot of ducks and geese flying back and forth. There's also hawks here too, sometimes turkey vultures and the occasional bald eagle. Last time I was here, um, a while ago actually in 2014, there were snowy owls that made their way down south. It was a really big year for snowy owls. I don't know if we'll see one today. Probably not. I haven't heard anything in the reports. But we're going to try our best and see what we can find. Oh, and one more thing. I want you guys to focus on four things today. Four. So we're going to focus on shape, size, sound, and behavior. Shape and size can pretty much work hand in hand. But those are the four things I want you guys to really focus on. This will help you become better bird watchers. As far as shape, size, sound, and behavior is concerned, it's hard to tell what we're looking at here. Those black sticks moving around the background are Canadian geese. They love these sort of environments that have running water and plenty of salt marsh grasses to eat. These two blobs at the center of the screen are great blue herons. You can tell these guys are quite large just for the fact that they stick right out in plain sight. At this point in the day when I shot this, the tide was at its lowest, meaning these herons are simply sitting around waiting for the incoming tide to bring in more fish. So they are just going to stay put and save their energy. However, the one on the right perked up from a slight disturbance, at which point you can see how tall they can stand. And that disturbance happened to be a coyote. And for good reason. If this guy had a chance to grab a heron, he wouldn't hesitate. Here's some more shots of him. Compared to the coyotes I've seen in Vancouver, which were more reddish in color, this eastern coyote is very, very dark and very large, about the size of a lab. Fun fact about them, after the eastern timber wolf was virtually wiped out by settlers in New England, the remaining timber wolves bred with coyotes. This led to a hybrid of sorts called koi wolves, and this guy probably fits the build of a koi wolf. They are quite beautiful, and there are more around us than you think. Okay, so back to the birds. This bird here that just flew in is a northern harrier, type of raptor or hawk. They are long and slender and have a unique profile when they fly. About the size of a house cat, they aren't actually going to go after anything the size of a cat. They mostly prey on small rodents. Unlike most hawks, however, they have hearing that's almost as good as an owl's. They even have a slight disc shape to their faces to help them funnel sounds into their ears, much like owls. And this is what they look like when they fly. 
Like most hawks, harriers have a fast downstroke when they fly, and they also hover in place if they hear or see something moving on the ground that catches their attention. This here is a turkey vulture. Notice the V-shape it makes when it glides along. They tend not to flap as much, though when they do it's very slow and lumbering. I heard a few subtle chips and squeaks near a pile of brush behind me and decided to investigate. Here we have a nice little song sparrow. Song sparrows are very common and occur throughout North America. Each subspecies is different in color. Sometimes you can hear him chip a little. A lot of sparrows make these similar call notes, so never assume these notes are always from a song sparrow. For example, this little guy was making similar sounds earlier, and he's clearly not a song sparrow. Swamp sparrows tend to be darker in color and less streaked than song sparrows. They also are a tad smaller than a song. Let's take a look at them side by side. So right off the bat, in terms of shape, the swamp sparrow is plumper and not as slender. They have a habit of compressing themselves because they like to be secretive. The tail on the song sparrow is slightly longer than the marsh. Let's get an even closer look at their head structures. The beaks are a little different. The swamp has a slightly downcurved conical beak, whereas the song has a straight conical beak. The patterning on their faces are similar, but with varying densities. On the swamp, you can see the colors blending in together from the breast to the flanks, while the song has clear contrasted streaks along the breast to the flanks. At first glance, you will notice the swamp has an overall darker appearance. Regarding behavior, as I said before, the swamp likes to stay hidden in dense cover. A lot of sparrows exhibit this scratching behavior. Basically, it serves as a way to clear an area for the purpose of revealing bugs or seeds. Also notice on this bird, he's constantly looking around. Right now he's exposed to predators, so he keeps his head on a swivel. When eluding danger, most sparrows tend to run into cover rather than fly, almost looking like a little mouse. To sum it all up, we have here one more sparrow, and this is a savanna sparrow. Savannas like large open spaces and aren't afraid to be out in an open field. Like a song, it also has fine streaks along most of its body. It's also even more slender than a song and has a somewhat athletic shape and slightly forked tail. At first glance, they are much lighter and have a slightly longer and thinner beak. Some even have faint yellow just above the eye, but this is more prevalent during the breeding season. Well, I think it's time to call it a day. I've been out here for three hours now, uh, bird watching, just hanging out. Also with my coyote friends, I saw three of them today. I've actually really never seen them in this marsh before. I've heard that they're around, but three coyotes, pretty cool. We saw a lot of birds today, saw some small ones, some large ones, some that were really far away, some that were fortunately really close by. Um, and that's just the beauty of bird watching in a marsh such as this. I got nothing else to say right now. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And if you already haven't, subscribe to my channel. Turn on notifications so you know when the next video will come out. But um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys right now. And I'll see you in the next week. See ya!